Welcome to the 28th presentation in the Healthy Smile, Happy Child presentation series called Parents Views on Silver Diamine Fluoride as a Treatment Option to Arrest Early Childhood Cares. Our presenter today is Dr. Grace Keon Achan. She is an Associate Researcher at the Children's Hospital Research Institute and the Qualitative Researcher for the Scaling Up Healthy Smile, Happy Child. She is primarily interested in Indigenous and new immigrant health and social well-being. In Canada, she has worked with Inuit, First Nations, and Métis peoples and communities. She is an expert in qualitative research and uses Indigenous community-based and decolonization research methods. Well, and thank you so much for coming in, um, and thank you to everybody out there who is connected. So, Okay, so I'll be presenting results from two studies on SDF that were conducted here in Manitoba, one with Indigenous populations and the other with newcomer uh, populations. So the study with Indigenous populations was with urban and community-based First Nations and Métis communities, and the one with newcomer populations was a mixed population of immigrants uh, from about 10 different countries. Okay, so this is slow. So a little bit of background on why the study uh, was done and why it's important. It's because early childhood caries rates are on the rise in Canada and dental surgeries to treat this condition in children 12 to 59 months of age account for almost 31 percent of all day surgeries performed in this group in Canada. Um, that's a lot and those were numbers from 2016 so we expect that it's probably higher because um, this is four years down the line. Total hospital associated costs of treating this condition um, as of 2016 was well over 21 million. So um, quite an expensive uh, treatment. What we do is to prevent, well, try and prevent early childhood caries, which is decay in primary teeth uh, in children up to 72 months, so six years. This is a common disease in children from low income households happens in middle and high income households too, but it's just more prevalent in low income households. We're seeing it in newcomer populations, refugee families, uh, people living in rural and remote regions of Canada, and in indigenous populations. Unfortunately, in indigenous populations, um, children experience a more severe form of that disease uh, called um, early, severe early childhood caries. And this poses an increased risk of decay throughout childhood, into adolescence, but even into adulthood. Um, and severe early childhood caries can negatively impact health and well-being you know, throughout the life cycle. Almost. So it's, um, it's a pretty important thing to try and uh, prevent. So I will prevent, uh, I'll present the First Nations and Métis study first and then follow up with the study with newcomers and immigrants. So our study position was um, basically that with evidence, what we know of uh, indigenous populations having severe early childhood caries, this population is basically a prime priority population to promote um, overall health and their overall health and well-being by promoting children's oral health. And we think silver diamond fluoride might be a promising non-restorative option to manage the disease in indigenous communities. But it's important to obtain First Nations and Métis parents' views before implementing this, okay? So this study was conducted with individuals who had not, had not even heard of SDF at all, but we needed to see if they would be open to this treatment, to the product. Um, so the study was conducted through the Healthy Smile Happy Child Initiative that takes a community development approach to improving the oral health and well-being of young children in Manitoba, so all young ch children, including First Nations and Métis. Um, a Healthy Smile, Happy Child has developed an implementation uh, research partnership that aims to understand factors affecting oral health in preschool children, um, so in urban centers, out in rural places, and in First Nation and Indigenous communities too, in order to scale up um, so that knowledge gathered is used to scale up oral health promotion in First Nations and Métis communities too. Well, for everybody. So it doesn't sound like we're singling out First Nations and Métis. Um, it's uh, oral health promotion is being scaled up for everyone, but even more so for this priority population. Um, 
So, and we do this by trying to understand various ways in improving young children's oral health, um, just what's going on in their communities is causing children to have these severe forms of the disease. So, our key Indigenous partners in here in Winnipeg would be um, Nananda Wawegamek, the First Nations Health and Social Secretariat of Manitoba, Métis Federation, and the First Nations and Métis communities that we work with to understand this condition. So our purpose was to gauge, well, among other dynamics, if SDF would be acceptable, if parents would be open to accepting this treatment as a possible safe and effective product for secondary prevention of ECCs and SECCs. Now, what do we know about SDF? We know about silver diamine uh, fluoride, but I'll be saying SDF going forward. We know that silver compounds are effective anti-caries agents. We know that has been used around the world for over a thousand years. You know, that's really strong evidence right there. We also know it was successfully used in a 1973 Canadian study and it had no adverse uh, effects reported. It's also being used in the US, in Argentina, in Brazil, and other parts of the world. And we know it could be a safe and effective non-surgical product for secondary prevention of caries. So arrests caries at least until primary teeth fall out naturally, which begins at about age six. So we took a community-based participatory research um, approach to engage First Nations and Métis communities um, here in Manitoba. We obtained ethics approval from the University of Manitoba Human Research um, Ethics Board, as well as the First Nations Health Information Research Governance uh, Committee, which is at FINISM. Participants were recruited through community-based oral health promoters, and it was voluntary. It was open to anybody could come. So dads, moms, grandparents, who, whoever was interested in this topic could come um, contribute their voices. We obtained written informed consent from everyone that participated. So we had focus groups and sharing circles. Um, focus groups were more with uh, Métis participants and sharing circles were with First Nations participants. That's, it's basically the same thing, but just had uh, different practices that took place with Métis and for First Nations individuals. We had eight groups in total. Four were rural, four were urban. So we had two groups that were primarily First Nations participants and two were primarily Métis and we had four that were mixed. So, and the four that were mixed were here in Winnipeg. Okay, so that's among the urban groups. But overall, we had 59 people participate. Um, all responses were audio recorded and transcribed verbatim so that we were capturing those voices exactly as people expressed them. And we conducted thematic analysis using in vivo 12. For the results, we present converging responses. So majority views what applied to what most people would have said. But in reporting quotes, we indicate who was a First Nation person speaking or who was a Métis person speaking to maintain distinction of thought. And we, all, we had 10 questions um, for the, in the study, but this one question there was the only one specific to SDF because we didn't want to catch people off guard or look like we were trying to push this product. So it was just one of 10 questions. And we asked people, if you knew that there was a liquid that could be painted on children's teeth that would turn their decay black, but would stop the need for a filling and possibly stop the need for a trip to the operating room, how would you feel about that? And is that something you would be willing to try? Okay, so not look at all like we were trying to push something. Now, as people started to ask more questions um, as to how that liquid would look, we showed them photos so they would see what it looked like. So we had, like we said, it was open to everybody uh, to participate. So we got parents in the room, we had grandparents, we had community members, um, but most people there had a, a child or grandchild under 72 months. 55% uh, of participants were not employed at the time. About 50% had less than high school education. 88% um, had at least one child. And so this would be for both First Nations and Métis populations. 
And here's a quick summary of results. Um, so the majority of parents consulted, so about 66% were willing to consider SDF over possible surgery. And it always had to be that way over possible surgery. Otherwise, it was, they wouldn't accept it. 13.6% um, uh, expressed concern with a possible cost or safety of the product. And 20% said they would not be willing to try SDF treatment at all, mainly because they would want more information. So more research and more information on the product. So First Nations and Métis parents' acceptance of SDF for those who said they would accept was primarily driven by fear of sedation for their kids, fear of pain associated with dental surgery for their children, um, safety, whether the product was safe, was it effective, was it affordable? Um, these were all questions they wanted responses to. Some were also concerned about the look of SDF, so aesthetic concerns about treated cavities turning black, as it does turn the decay black. Parents said they would be willing to try the treatment, provided it prevents infections, and the need for dental surgery. So it was always contingent on, it really has to work and it um, needs to be affordable and shouldn't look bad on the child. And some quotes here will you know, help you see what, how the parents were thinking. So for fear of sedation, uh, we're Métis parents, and once again, keep in mind, they're not isolated quotes. All quotes can represent like, what a lot of people said of the 59 participants. So there's one Métis parent saying, well, I guess you can't be 100% sure that nothing will go wrong when they're under, and that's scary, so fear. Um, and a First Nation parent saying, well, you don't want your kids to be high, you know? That's another thing about anesthetic. It's no good for them for anything. Even when an adult is under anesthetic, when they wake up after they get their wisdom, after they get their wisdom teeth pulled, like lots of people, you see videos of people just acting dumb and don't know how to act or walk or anything, you know? So people wanting to avoid that if possible. And then others were afraid of pain associated with dental surgery. Uh, so this one First Nation parent saying, well, that's not something I want my son to go through because I went through it myself and it's very traumatizing. And a Métis parent echoing that sentiment, thereby saying it's traumatizing. Uh, so lots of parents also said they would like more information on safety and affordability of the product. Uh, so it's one uh, First Nation parent said, well, I would need more information. I would want to know what the studies are and the long-term effects and all that. Like, is it going to damage the nerve for later on? I would have to know more about it before I consider that. And that's fair, right? Um, and a Métis par parent say, well, is there a lot of research? Because to be honest, I would be scared because anything you put in your mouth is going to go into your body. So how is that going to affect the child? Um, another fair question right there. And uh, Métis parent asking, how much does it cost for parents that are not working? Well, that's, that's a reasonable question too, because we know um, that dental care is not covered unless people work. Um, some First Nations may have access to NIHB, but Métis participants basically don't. Um, and for aesthetic concerns, uh, you can take a look at that photo there. Observe the black on the teeth. Those are actually the treated teeth. Okay, so it, you know, it goes on and turns the teeth black. Um, and so parents expressed some concern with that. The First Nation person saying, well, it might make the kid embarrassed because their teeth are black. And a mixed group parent saying, well, you just got to stay with that, referring to the black color. So the kid has to walk around with that. It looks a lot worse, but it's healthy. Great. Um, and another mixed group uh, parent saying, well, I would rather have them pulled than to have a black tooth. And another saying, well, my first reaction when I see it, I thought that black color, like it's the rotten teeth. Okay, and that was a very common <coughs> reaction. Um, but then for those who accepted, said they would accept the treatment, um, these quotes would express that, the, the reasons why, very well. So this mixed group parent said, well, in my mind, the reason why I say yes, but yes to accepting SDF, or would consider it, is because I know that that's the best solution. It's going to stop the decay in its track. It's not going to hurt my baby anymore. It's not going to keep proceeding. Like I said, if I got to wait three months on a waiting list and my baby's in pain, 
I'd rather do that knowing my kid is not going to be in any pain. And that eventually, once you say four, five, six years old, when her teeth start falling off, that it's just going to fall off anyways. And uh, another mixed group thing, parents saying, well, I do it just because then they don't want to go to surgeries, right? Because the tooth decay is enough, because if the tooth decay is enough, you could give them lots of pain. So um, uh, pain being a push factor for acceptance. So um, in general, we saw that respondents in the study are aware of difficulties associated with ECCs. They have lived experience. Right? They have children living with the condition and they know how um, terribly it could impact their child's uh, well-being. And um, many had also themselves as parents experienced dental surgery under general anesthesia or had other children who had experienced it and were quite anxious about, um, about that. Um, and so also, although there is increasing evidence of the effectiveness and safety of SDF, parents had never heard about it. So it made sense that so they wanted more practical information and evidence to make informed choices, um, even though it seems good. Uh, so we think information sheets, local champions, and consent forms could assist in obtaining, obtaining meaningful engagement around SDF implementation, especially because some people were really not wanting it, even though it would be a safe and non-invasive option. Um, we also saw that parents may be open to SDF, but may demand additional measures to deal with the anesthetic appearance. So maybe white fillings going over the black um, treated teeth. So in conclusion for the First Nation Métis study, um, we would say First Nations and Métis participants in the study at least um, require accessible, understandable information and compelling evidence in order to accept SDF as a new treatment option for their children. Um, many said they'd be willing to try the treatment they had guarantees, okay? So um, I guess dentists and other practitioners Practitioners need to um, think through and talk about how to present some of these guarantees to families. But for sure, many would try the treatment if it meant they would avoid surgery under general anesthesia. Parental consent is important. We can't stress this enough because it's possible that a parent gets the treatment um, and then once they see it on their child, they turn around and, and um, react uh, negatively. Okay, so I'll now move on to the newcomer parents' views on SDF. So First Nations and Métis parents had not received the treatment at all. We just asked the question that um, if there was this option of something that could go on a child's decayed tooth and would help, would they consider it? This group here, the newcomer uh, parents, actually had their children receive the treatment and we got to evaluate their experience. So once again, just reiterating what we know about SDF, at the risk of me sounding like I'm pushing the product, no I'm not, I have no affiliations with them at all. But we know for sure SDF, silver compounds, are effective in arresting uh, tooth decay. We know this evidence has been used for over a thousand years. We know it's been tried right here in Canada with no adverse um, effects. It's been used elsewhere. We know it's safe and we know it's um, non-surgical. However, it has this significant drawback where um, treated teeth, those cavities turn black. So what we wanted to know uh, in this study with this population was how feasible um, it would be to apply SDF how effective it would be in arresting caries, and um, what parents' reaction would be to the treatment itself. Um, so this was a mixed methods feasibility trial of SDF to manage ECCs in preschool children from here uh, in Manitoba. And once again, we, have, we obtained ethics approval from the University of Manitoba Biomedical Research Ethics Board, and parents provided written informed consent. Um, so, there were kind of four stages in the study. So, at the first visit, parents filled out a baseline questionnaire and they had a dental assessment and they had the first application of SDF on their children's cavities. They came back four months later and um, had a dental assessment, 
got a second application of SDF and filled out um, the first um, early childhood oral health impact scale questionnaire. Um, and then they came back for a third time, four months later for a dental assessment. They had, um, they completed a follow-up questionnaire and completed a second ECOHIS um, questionnaire. And then um, two months after that, we began the qualitative interviewing of parents to gauge their, theirs or their children's um, experiences with, with the treatment. And I am only speaking to the qualitative portion of the study. So we uh, conducted semi-structured in-depth key informant interviews with parents of children who had received SDF treatment. Uh, we had 21 interviews, but two weren't very good quality because we were working through interpreters too, and it just didn't, uh, they weren't usable, so 19 were included. Um, we conducted interviews in person or by phone. We used interpreter services with people who had low English proficiency, and data was again transcribed. It was open coded where we gathered preliminary uh, themes and then did a more in depth uh, thematic analysis using in vivo. And those would be our 10 questions um, on the screen there. So, and I will draw attention to. Um, question number four, where we asked parents if they thought baby teeth were important, because that's, that's key for how the babies even got the decay in the first place. And we asked if there was anything they were worried about uh, with the treatment, and we asked how they felt when they saw the treatment and how they reacted to the cavities changing color, because that would be the biggest drawback for using SDF. So um, we once again, wanted to explore parental and child views regarding the feasibility. Children speaking, of course, through, you know, their parents, or we had parents speaking on behalf of their kids because they're very young kids. And just to point out again, we were looking for how easy and convenient the whole treatment had been for families and um, how parents felt about the treatment. So these were parents of children under 72 months. Um, and the mean age of the children was uh, 5.4 years of age. Um, it included, as I had mentioned before, a mixed population of new immigrants to Canada, representing over 10 countries, which are not indicated on there. But um, we had five of African descent, four of Asian descent. We had one of person of European descent. We had five um, from Middle Eastern countries three North American descent and one um, South American or Latino descent participate. So 26% um, were males, 73% were females, which is typical of most research, I would say, unless it's very focused on men's issues. So a summary of results. Um, so 40 children were enrolled in the study. 40 children received uh, the SCF treatment. Parents in the study had an average of 3.4 children. So the, one, the parents with the least number of children was just, they had one child, and parents with the most children had eight children. And all of them said baby teeth were important, which is good. Uh, so of the 19 respondents, 84% had had a tooth filling prior to enrolling in the study. This was important because they had something to compare the SDF treatment with. If they hadn't had a tooth filling or anything, then there was nothing to compare with. 86% said they, had, they were not worried about the treatment at all. 88% um, said they would recommend SDF to others. 36% were concerned about the black staining of cavities after treatment. And 63% were not concerned um, at all. So parents reported two children being slightly concerned with the black staining, and others said their children were too young to really care about the black staining. And I'll go through and just, um, again, like you see parents' voices. Um, so parents were aware of the importance of baby teeth, primarily for masticating food, but also for speech development. But um, many didn't quite know how their baby's teeth were connected to overall well-being but thought it was important, so that's a good thing. So there's one parent here saying, well, because it's part of the body and it's, very, it's a very important part of the body that needs to be taken care of. Um, so all parents, 100% of parents in the study, learned about SDF as a treatment option from the dentist. They heard for the first time in the study. 
And this one uh, parent here says, well, he, referring to the child, had tooth pain in the back there. And the doctor actually had to remove his tooth that day. We went in for an emergency dental appointment. He, referring to the dentist, pulled his tooth out. And the dentist talked to me about a silver treatment because my kids have never been to a dentist before. But even in children who have been to a dentist, we find a lot just don't know about this treatment option. Um, so parents were happy to have received additional information and articles to read further about SDF. So they weren't just taking the dentist's word for how effective um, or safe the treatment would be. So this one parent here says, um, he, referring to the dentist, said it's safe, so I trust him. He gave us a few papers to read about it. I read all of those and I think it's good. So um, I did, a majority of parents, 63% were accepting of the treatment for three primary reasons. One was because it was recommended by the dentist whose opinion they trust. So we think the dentist's um, relationship with parents will be key in delivering this treatment because if parents don't trust their particular dentist, they may not be open to the treatment. Um, and here's a quote to support that. Well, this parent said, we never have seen before this kind of uh, treatment. So the sentences might be a bit weird, but that's because it was transcribed verbatim. We've never seen before this kind of treatment. The doctor explained to us, and so we were satisfied about his treatment, his explanation. That's why we'll go with that one. And the second reason was that it stopped pain, sensitivity, and progression of cavities. Um, and there are two quotes here. So one says, it reduces the cavity when we used SDF on the teeth, after a few minutes, the pain stopped. And that was a big driver for her uh, families. And an another parent saying, well, it help helps actually preventing infections and stuff like that. Now remember, they had been seeing um, the dentist over at least eight months. So they would have observed the children's mouths to see if there were any um, progression of infections. And the third reason, or the third driver, would be that it's non-invasive, does not involve drilling, and is, um, once again, painless. Uh, and this one quote here where a parent says, I don't want to go through like all those extensive procedures. He was talking about drilling and fillings and all that. Aesthetic concerns uh, did come up, um, where some parents, uh, at least 36%, expressed concern with the black staining, depending on whether front teeth had been treated or back uh, teeth, but still many preferred SDF to any kinds of fillings or tooth extractions. Um, and, this, and parents said they would recommend it. So this one quote where parents said, well, I would refer to recommending SDF. I would recommend SDF if, if it wasn't the front teeth. Here I would if they weren't visible. So and these were the parents who were absolutely shocked once they saw their baby's teeth um, after the treatment. Um, and this one, parent um, saying, we don't like that treatment because when my son laughs or smiles, his upper teeth look black and dirty, it's not appropriate at all, and his lower teeth um, are white. And these parents had also said they would absolutely not recommend the treatment at all, which is where consent becomes key in offering the treatment. Children themselves were, however, reported to be not as concerned with the black staining of cavities, likely because they were too young or the pain just went away and the child was happy. Um, and so two quotes here to support that. Uh, one saying, well, it's the third time with fluoride. It really wasn't. They only got two treatment, but you know, memory, I guess, was a bit foggy in that case. But the parent saying, well, she's happy that no pain. Okay. So again, pain being a significant factor for uh, parents. And another quote here where a parent says, well, my child is very young. He's only four years old. He didn't care about that yet, but it will be a big trouble when he goes to school, when he's at the age of going to school. Um, so, and parents' openness to recommend the treatment or not um, was also based on, well, the good experience of their child's pain and infection stopping, but they were, they hesitated to, because the child might be embarrassed at school if they were at school age. Um, okay, so this quote here, um, two quotes, where a parent says, I recommend it to other people, 
it's a good treatment for the kids because it's painless, everything's good, that's why. And another saying here, recommended, you know, everything like um, effects, like change. They, referring to dentists, are there to help. I think I'll give advice for my friends to do that too. So in general, we see that parents in the study are aware of the importance of baby teeth. Not many really connected to overall well-being, but at least they, they are aware of that. Um, and we think dentists should in fact promote SDF as a treatment option to parents, but provide additional information so it's not just coming from the dentist, um, just as a dentist, but parents want evidence. We saw that too in the study with First Nations and Métis population, populations who really wanted to see some research and some um, science behind this. Um, a majority were accepting of the treatment due to the dentist's recommendation. So once again, that's uh, super important, but all ramifications should be discussed. Parents need to be clear and to see pictures of what the black staining looks like and what their child's um, teeth could look like, particularly when they have lots of um, decayed teeth and obtain informed consent. Um, so there had been some concern with the black staining. However, parents still preferred SDF to options such as fillings and tooth extractions. No reason why it shouldn't be offered by dentists because it's not invasive and it's painless for their children. Um, but we also think a discussion perhaps placing white fillings over stained teeth might be worthwhile for parents. But also keep in mind that you could also just let a parent know that those teeth will fall out. They're permanent teeth, they're not permanent. Um, there is also the issue of children maybe being embarrassed once they get to school, uh, school age, we could, which could potentially be a pretty serious um, Thing for children and their parents, you know, it might cause bullying. We don't know that, we haven't studied that, but um, it could happen and some parents mentioned that they were concerned, so it, it does need to be talked about. Um, but in general, most parents said they would be um, open to the treatment, so dentists need to be prepared to respond to SDF-related questions from families, especially as the, these studies have happened and now there's increasing awareness. Um, in communities, people are recommending it, so more people will be reaching out and talking to dentists. So um, SDF is an important innovation, be it for um, First Nations MET populations, new immigrants, um, Canadian pop, just everybody. It's an important innovation. It holds the potential to transform how parents deal with their children's cavities and, um, you know, can, it arrests decay, so it stops it in its, track until, in its track until the tooth falls out naturally. It can also reduce rates of dental surgeries under general anesthesia. Um, but parents, more parents as well as even dentists, need to be made aware of SDF treatment, of um, the black staining that can happen, and any side effects that need to be uh, clearly explained. And we highly, highly, highly recommend informed consent with this treatment at every point. And that's it, I guess, you know, just acknowledging our team here. So the Children's Hospital Research Institute of Manitoba, the um, Dr. Gerald Nisnik College of Dentistry here at the University of Manitoba, the First Nations and Métis communities that participated, um, the newcomer parents who participated too, and our Healthy Smile, Happy Child Scaling Up Team. And I guess I'll take questions.